Devin Fulser for Mercer will get us started. And he's going to squib it. Little punch shot that is recovered by Alabama and Cameron Latou. So here is Bryce Young at a modern day in Pasadena, California. 344 yards last week against Miami and four touchdowns. That was an Alabama quarterback record for touchdowns in his first career start. Better than Joe Namath. Better than anyone else. That was a record share by Namath and Mac Jones who's starting this weekend for the Patriots. Brian Robinson is the tailback to start this game for Bama. And he is physical, and he will run over guys, including a couple of extra right there. Over Yashin McKee. Brian Robinson had to sit and just wait his turn. Josh Jacobs, Damian Harris, Najee Harris, both Scarborough. You know, he hasn't had a 100-yard game and hasn't had more than 13 carries in a game. They're going to start to ride him today and for the rest of this season. Look forward to seeing that. Patiently awaited his opportunity. Got his first career start in his 53rd career game. Young gets it to John Mechie on the perimeter for a pickup of four. This quarterback success at this level and the next level goes hand-in-hand -hand with the wide receiver success in the recent history of this program. Absolutely, and I tell you what, Alabama has a few playmakers on the outside. Jamison Williams, JoJo Earl, the young freshman. I'm really excited about, and obviously John Mechie. Those three can be just as good as the trio or the foursome that Alabama has had in recent years. And Slade Bolton in the slot, one of Young's favorite receivers, third and short. Pressured, and he goes down. Alabama line gives up the sack to Solomon Zubaru. It's a loss of seven. Zubaru, their best pass rusher, really plays the read side end for this defense. You're going to see him working off the right side, the quarterback's right side here, and he just wins with speed. On the outside, working on Chris Owens, who really was expecting to play center to start this year and bumped outside because of some injuries. Now at right guard, or excuse me, right tackle. So three and out for Alabama. James Burnup, the Aussie punter, will kick it away. Yashin McKee cornerback but originally a wide receiver at Mercer. It'll take a Bama roll to the 30 and be a 42 yard punt. Mercer has good depth for their level especially at the quarterback position. We'll see two of them today. Carter Peavy will start. Fred Payton transfer from Coastal Carolina will come off the bench. This is an interesting offense that they run. It is run heavy it is at times not traditional and Peyton and as a matter of fact will end up taking the ball to start this game for Mercer extremely unique offense it's a little bit Paul Johnson Georgia Tech a little bit spread you're gonna see wings you're gonna see bellies and a lot of pre-snap movement to try to catch Alabama off guard Fred Davis is at tailback and he gets stopped in the backfield on the very first play Byron Young lost the one that was done something Nick Saban told us in our meetings, guys, that he did not anticipate being able to find a lot of negative plays against this offense based on the way that they operated. He and Pete Golding have to be excited to get one right off the jump. So second and long now for Payton. He's a junior from Sewanee, Georgia. Two years ago was a starting quarterback for the Chanticleers. Lost his job to Grayson McCall. Here's that little wingback set. Two wings tight. Fullback right behind. A lot of misdirection, a lot of window dressing as Ethan Durham, freshman, picks up four yards. It's a throwback offense to the extent that this is uh, this is something that their coach ran in high school. <laughs> he said some of the plays, his dad coached him in high school. That's Drew Cronick, the head coach there for Mercer. He said some of the plays we call the exact same that I did 30-plus years ago. But it's a unique system, and when you don't train for it and you don't see it as Alabama really doesn't, except for this game, it can cause some problems. Third down seven and a big shift up front. And a stop for Fred Davis after just a gain of two. Uh, incredible numbers for Mercer last week. They scored 69 points against NAIA point. Obviously, a different level of competition today. 778 yards. I don't care who you're playing against. That's a lot of production. Really hard to achieve that. But their main goal today, as offensive coordinator Bob Bodine mentioned, make Alabama think. 
pre-snap. You're not going to out-athlete them, but try to make them think that time Alabama lined up to a little bit of a gadget on that third down. Trey Turk punts it away. Slade Bolden has to chase it. That's it. Nobody is facing a tougher opponent than Mercer. Young, pressure, gets away a wobbler and incomplete. Cole, what is going on with the Alabama offensive line early? Well, I don't know if I would put that one on the offensive line. Just play action protection there, and you're bringing the tight end across. Looks like Cam Latu picked up his man, but maybe just good scouting on the part of Mercer, having an understanding in that side formation. You get that play action off and bring a little pressure off the backside. It's kind of tough to pick that one up. Alabama scored on its first five possessions last week against Miami in Atlanta. Bryce Young has been sacked once already. Pressured another time. Gives it up to Robinson. And the Tuscaloosa native will pick up what they were missing. Right at the edge of a first down. That time a really good block on the left side by number 70, 70 J.B. on Cohen, the left guard. This is what Alabama's got to do. Get 70. Wash down that nose guard and climb up to the next level. Got to establish the line of scrimmage here early in this game. It was a first down. Here's Robinson again. This time he has stopped at the line of scrimmage. Alvin Ward and Solomon Zubaru. A strong start to this game on that defensive line for Mercer. Yeah, we spoke with defensive coordinator Joel Taylor about Alvin Ward. He's, he's really their best pro prospect. If any scouts come through, they're always looking at number 42. 6'4", 230, fast off the edge. Transferred in from Georgia Southern. By the way, Joel Taylor, the defensive coordinator, has had some success at least through a half in this building. He was the defensive backs coach at the Citadel in 2018 when they were tied at the half with Alabama. Young. Wide open, but a drop for Jamison Williams. That's a great route, great call by Bill O'Brien. Hard play action fake, and this is just a deep V out, we used to call it. You fake the post, get to midfield, you hit the corner route, nobody's there, and this is... Oh, you could see, look at Jamison, as he was turning, he started to look for where that corner or safety was, took his eyes off it for just a second. Movement up front, Chris Hill, redshirt freshman out of Statesboro, Georgia. Preseason second team Sutter Conference. Offside, defense, number 98. Five-yard penalty, third down. Jason Autry, our referee today. Third down four for Bryce Young in Alabama. Mercer drops eight. So Robinson out of the backfield. And he is running over, guys. We got mouthpieces flying out. Ken Stanley finally to stop. Multiple flags after. Looks like Jamison Williams was involved. We got flags on the field, mouthpieces, towels. The result of play is a first, day in, first down for Alabama. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number one. 15-yard penalty that is number one's first unsportsmanlike foul of the contest. It'll be first and ten, Alabama. Uh, let's take a look at that right side. Good protection there on a third and medium. Give Bryce Young some time. Obviously, number 79, Chris Owens, the right tackle, has had some trouble. Giving up a few pressures already early. This time, they slide the protection that way. Give him a little help and a good job. Working on Solomon Zubaru there, one of their better pass rushers as well. Jace McClellan is now in at running back. Fresh set of downs, but backwards in field position. This is John Mechie on the end of round, and we get another flag. Number 55, 10-yard penalty, first down. 
Not exactly a rip-roaring start for Alabama here this afternoon. Nick Saban warned every about it, everybody about it midweek in his press conference. Let's take you back. Look, middle of field number one. This was the personal foul penalty two plays ago after he took a hit at the end. Oh. Uh, you know, sometimes they catch the second guy. Yeah. Not the first, right? Understandable frustration there from Williams. Dropped the pass, then obviously gets lit up there. Empty backfield for Bryce Young. Not on the same page with Trayshawn Holden. Tell you what, if I'm Mercer right now, I'm feeling pretty good about the tone that we're setting early in this game. They're being physical. They're not bowing down to Alabama. They didn't lose this game before they got off the bus. They came ready to play. Drew Chronic was a teammate, teammate of Kirby Smart at Georgia before getting into the coaching business. Second and 19 now. Here's Williams. Chance to atone for his mistake, and he is bottled up. Chronic told us this week, we've got to play the game smart. We've got to do the little things right if we want to have a chance and be competitive in this game. Seems like they're doing so early, and Alabama is not. Yeah, and that number one thing on the list was tackle. And even so much so that Joel Taylor, defense coordinator for Mercer, said, we need 11 guys on one. Everybody's got to rally to the football because we're not always going to get them with one. They've been doing a really good job of that so far. That's why Alabama hasn't been able to break anything long in the run or in space on the outside. Third and long. Down the sideline and too strong to try and find Williams. Mercer will force another punt. It was Lance Wise, the safety who came over on coverage that time. This is just a full field progression, which means Bryce Young is going to work from the left side, a corner, and a flat route down here at the bottom. And for 500 yards last week in their blowout win, but they need to be an efficient passing team to be an effective offense. Yeah, and it's going to base around that play action. It's going to base around getting quick throws to the perimeter, obviously trying to make this game two-on-two two and three-on-three three, get away from all those big guys that Alabama has on the front four, front seven. School record 778 yards of offense last week. A school record in points and yards, rushing yards. They averaged better than nine yards a rush against an NAIA opponent. Now taking on number one Alabama. Brandon Marshall finds his one yard on the left side, and that'll set up third and nine. Christian Harris with the stop for the tie. And Drew Sanders out there, number 20, filling in for the injured Chris Allen. This is the one part of his game that is maybe not on the level that Chris Allen is, being firm against the run. He's a little more athletic, better in coverage. He's going to be great off the edge in a pass rush situation. But Chris Allen was so stout on the outside and contained for the run game. See how 20 evolves out there in place of Allen for the rest of the season. Third down nine. Pressure. Peyton gets rid of it to his running back Fred Davis and Davis is shoved out of bounds after a pickup of three now Just again trying to get the ball on the perimeter here You're gonna see looking right and a quick throw to the left But a great job there by Henry Toe Toe not falling for the quarterback's eyes his read key Is that running back he goes left I go left Good job on third down getting off the field Devin Fulcher will punt it away. Slate Bolden back. We are a little surprised we're seeing Fred Payton multiple series instead of Carter Peavy. Oh, Alabama got it! Bama with the pop block looking for offense from special teams. And it'll be a walk-in for Chris Braswell. 31-yard return. Braswell got the punt block. And then it was returned by Jace McClellan.
Real white Reichert on for the point after. Well, simple as that. Can't find offense with the offense. Go find it with special team. That's one way to do it. You're going to see here 41 working off the right side right here. And 81 supposed to step out and block him, but 81 stays inside. You can see they're supposed to bump, bump to the outside. 81 just stays right there and lets him go and run right by. That is not what you want to do when you're standing back there as the personal protector for the punt. I've the seen Anakin's move more than that. Yeah, he literally just, uh, I don't know if he knew they snapped it. I was going to say, I don't think he saw the snap. Yeah, he might not have. Well, number 91, I mean, not 81. But, hey, points on the board, right? Indeed. You're Alabama. Your offense hasn't been doing what you want. Been a little stalled the last couple drives, but got some points on the board. Officially 33 yards on the return of the block punt by Jace McClellan. Reichard will kick it off. And that'll go out of bounds and a flag on the kickoff. We got a busy night coming up our week two lineup continues the Mac Corral number 20 Ole Miss playing host the governors of Austin P. Huge one SEC Saturday night. Elijah Drinkwitz takes his Missouri Tigers into Lexington to battle with Kentucky and McNeese against LSU at 8 o'clock Eastern. Cody Ogeron, Coach O's son starting at quarterback. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine being the starting quarterback against your dad's LSU team? <laughs> it's wild. Bring the blitz. <laughs> yeah. He's going to come after him. Every game available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Not sure if Nick Saban's happy with what he's been watching from the Alabama offense here early on, but a block punt gave him a touchdown. And now Carter Peavy, who we expected to start at quarterback, finally comes in for the third series. The Cobra quarterback in the spring. Had a good game last week against the Point Panthers. And will hand it off to Brandon Marshall. What is the difference between Fred Payton, who started a quarterback, and Carter Peavy? Well, Peavy's a little more polished of a passer. He ran a spread offense in high school, and I was laughing with him because they'll get under center every now and then for some of the wing team. I was like, when had you ever taken a snap from under center? He's like, no. And it probably took me about a year to feel comfortable with the footwork and being under center. But he's definitely the more polished passer here if they get in passing situations. Three wins against top 25 opponents at their level last year for Mercer in the Southern Conference. School record 406 yards passing against Furman. And is able to get it to the edge. And Devron Harper right near the marker. We'll see if Mercer's got its first first down. And Harper is probably their, their fastest guy on the outside. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets some jet sweeps. They try to get him the ball, some handoffs, because he gets on the edge. He is tough to tackle. They fake the reverse, and the quarterback, Peavy, will keep it himself, and he's able to tiptoe down the sideline. Jordan Battle forces him out. And again, both Peavy and number four, who we saw earlier, Fred Payton, they're both pretty good athletes. Unsuspecting, really. Peavy's got some juice. You can see a great little misdirection play there, getting the back end guys to get their eyes on that reverse, and then having the quarterback just sneak front side. A great block on the outside as well to give Peavy a little extra space. PB from Lawrenceville, Georgia, out of Archer High School. 2,000 yards and 16 touchdowns through the air, and that spread offense his senior year. That one tipped and intercepted. Kool-Aid McKintry came right through the brick wall after Drew Sanders tipped it. A little stiff arm. Why does Nick Saban like this guy so much? Well, he's dynamic, right? Anytime you have a slot guy that is shorter, 
but athletic, has burst. You can get him the ball in that way, right? Misdirection, short throws, you can hand him the ball. He also can take the top off of the defense from the slot, which makes you really dangerous as an offense. Blitz coming up the middle. Robinson runs by the blitz. Steps out of a tackle and dives forward past the 20, a pickup of 13. Going back to a little bit of zone scheme here for the Alabama offensive line. Watch center Darren Dalcourt, 71. Just leading the way. If you're not going to be able to get the hat all the way across, just go ahead and be strong with that right arm. Press it and open up the hole. Pressure from the edge this time. Young eludes it. One foot throw. Here's Joe Earl. And he stays on his feet for a Bama first down inside the five. That was just an RPO there by Bryce Young. Safety rolled over the top to JoJo Earl. He would like to get it off a little sooner, but pressure in his face once again. Hand it off, Robinson, and the entire pile will end up in the end zone. Touchdown Alabama, first of the game late in the first quarter for the offense. Exactly what Alabama needed to do. Run the football. Impose your will, will on a team that is not as athletic, not as big. Checking to see if his knee bounced down just before he crossed the goal line. Doesn't look like it. Great drive there by Alabama. So here's Will Reichert at a Hoover High School. If he's missed an extra point in the game, it came in middle school. Perfect here, perfect in high school. The perfection continues in the kicking game. And Alabama finally finds its drive on offense. Five play, 54 yard drive that time, led by Rob, Brian Robinson Jr. Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow CFP Extra Yard. And here's Brian Robinson with a special message to his teacher, Amy Hydrick. Hey, Ms. Hydrick. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you for always being so caring and supportive. Uh, we really appreciate you for all the hard work and efforts you put into all of your students. Uh, you really helped guide me and lead me in the right direction in one of the most critical times in my life, and that's what helped me get here today. And I'll always be thankful for that. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Hydrick. Roll Tide. Amy Hydrick, a teacher just down the road at Hillcrest High School, about five and a half miles here from Brian Denny Stadium. Stetson Bennett got the start for Georgia today. They lead UAB 28-0 Bennett, 5 for 5, 4 touchdowns. Um, I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah. You think he was motivated after losing his job last last year? Really slightly. I thought UAB was going to give him a little more trouble early in that game. It's not a bad football team. Trendy conversation, but Georgia is still Georgia. Yes, that defense is best in the country. Ohio State upset today, Cole, by Oregon. Lost at home 35-28 to start the day. Uh, and without their two best defenders yeah. on that Oregon defense, which is extremely impressive for Mario Cristobal, former Alabama offensive line coach, to be able to take the Ducks into the horseshoe and get that win. What's that QBR, by the way? Uh, five for five, four <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> uh, just start. Somebody do the math on that one. Yeah. Infinity. Take an eight and turn and it sideways. The Mercer Bears played the first college football game in the Deep South against Georgia. That was January 1892. Their program went on hiatus in the mid-1900s for a while. They'll keep it on the ground here to the right side. And Durham. I was reading up on that game yesterday. I was really interested in the, the uh, news accounts of it. Mercer back then wore black and gold. The end zone was painted in both teams' colors. Touchdown counted for four, a PAT to a field goal five. Georgia won 50 to nothing, but uh, the Georgia offensive lineman A.L. Halsey said it was actually 10 points were unaccounted for because the scorekeeper left early <laughs> to get to the liquor store before sundown. Jeez. Batted away. And Alabama getting penetration from Justin Eboigby. Eboigby, the direction there. Will Anderson as well, working on the edge. Both those guys going up for the ball. Third down here. It's a passing situation, which Mercer might hand it off, but 
the main topic of conversation for Drew Cronick in this Mercer offense was how do we handle number 31, Will Anderson, in passing situations. Double teams, tight ends, chips, any way they can try to keep 31, one of the best pass rushers in the country, off their quarterback. Quick to the line. Play action on third down. Peavy, pressure, taken down! Alabama sack DJ Dale. It's a loss of four, and the punting team will come out. And pressure from a few different angles here. It'll play action. That yeah, came off the edge there for Drew Sanders. Again, that, that's kind of his strength, right? He's not the same body type as Chris Allen. Not as stout in the run, but he is quick off the edge and good at pass coverage. Trey Turk had the last one blocked. You got Slade Bolden back to return for Alabama. Bolden will have a chance here. Starting at the 32. Flags come down. He's tripped up shy of the 50. 35 yard punt. During their turn, holding, return team, number 21, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. All right, it may just be because I'm a quarterback and I like offense and yeah. I like throwing the football, but a great drive by Alabama running the football. But Bill O'Brien's kind of a quarterback guy too, so if I'm him, I'm sitting there going, kind of feels like a time to take a shot. Tried a couple of shots, haven't had anybody open downfield, I don't know. Got Jace McClellan in a tailback. It's funny, all the broadcasts we've ever done, Tom, I've never heard Jordan say, hey, time to run the ball. <laughs> nope. No. It's always time to take a shot. Time to play conservative and hand the ball off. Four-man front this time for Mercer. McClellan. Able to find four on first down. A really slow start for Bryce Young for whatever reason. First two possessions and a little bit better on the third. Last week against Miami, 344 yards, four touchdowns. Lights out. What impressed you the most? Just how well he operated under pressure. I mean, he was under duress. A lot of that football game still stayed poised in pocket. Threw well under pressure yeah. with guys in his face. Completed a lot of balls for a guy that that's his first extended playing time. Against the Blitz last week, he went 12 for 18 for 158 yards and three touchdowns. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number three, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Isaac Dowling commits a face mask penalty. You know, and part of that is you, you look at Bryce Young, and he's, he's not very tall, 5'11", whatever it is, 5'10", maybe. Very unassuming, but his ability to throw the football from multiple platforms and change his arm angle is crucial when you have guys in your face, especially under pressure. He does that at an elite level. So that was the plan for Manny Diaz in Miami last week. Game plans may be changed going forward as John Mechie shakes one to pick up the first down. You guys speak of throwing off platform, and we wondered who Bryce Young sort of emulates in a really cool conversation at the facility yesterday. Jordan and I went to practice. We're walking through the hallway, and we passed by Bryce Young, and we stopped and just said, hey, nice to meet you, shake his hand, talk to him a little bit. Jordan says, hey, I'm just curious, which quarterback did you emulate growing up? Who did you try to throw like, try to be like? And he looks at both of us, doesn't understand, has no idea, and he says, oh, man, it's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, definitely Aaron Rodgers. I, th I think he's the most talented passer I've ever seen. He's the guy that he's the guy that I want to throw like and the guy that I want to be like. And just watch this right here. Look at this little flip. See that? I mean, that, that looks like 12 for Green Bay, right? The way his both feet kind of come off the ground, the way he flips his hips, comes out a little sidearm. Pretty cool to watch. Did you reintroduce yourself after you learned that information? Yeah, I don't think he – I think after the fact, he's like, oh, yeah, you, you do kind of look like him. <laughs> Young looks left, coming back right. It is, in many ways, the new era of quarterbacks, yeah. right? And it's not just the quarterback position, but then the fit into an RPO offense to get the ball out quickly versus the old statuesque pro-style think Peyton Manning quarterback. Absolutely. I mean, back then, you're throwing more deeper play action, intermediate shots in the RPO game. The ball is out right away, and you have linemen four, five, six yards in front of you, so you have to find a passing lane a lot of times with your arm angle. You can't throw over the top of those guys, especially if you're a shorter quarterback. Helps you get the ball out quicker and with more velocity. New right tackle. Looked like Damian George Jr. has entered the game for Alabama. 
Pocket holds. Good job by George. And that one is on the money to Mechie again. And a first down on the third down conversion. And I tell you what, breaking down film this past week, one of the things I was so impressed with was John Mechie and his ability to execute the details of route running. When you really watch him, where his eyes go, where his shoulders and That's his the head, end of the first quarter. Time how he sets up different routes and breaks. I mean, he is an elite route runner, as well as being an elite talent on the outside for Alabama. It's been an elite wide receiver room and quarterback room for Alabama over the last few years. Into the first quarter. See if Bolden gets in here. Sure looks like, oh, well, ball comes out there, but all you got to do is get that ball secured and touch that white goal line. Up and over. Yeah. Tough to tell there, and I think it'll stay. Here's Riker with the extra point. Well designed play by Bill O'Brien. Great adjustment there by Bryce Young. He actually changed the route once he sees the rotation of the defense. I'll show you here. Watch this. So this guy comes in. Safety's rolling over. He changes this route of Slade Bolton to a little out route because he knows that safety's rolling over. Instead of running a slant right to him, let's send you away from him. Look at all that green grass on the outside. Great little adjustment. You saw the hand signal by Bryce Young echoed there in the slot by Slade Bolton communicating pre-snap. Watch this. Looks out, sees it. Yep. Hey. Boom. Change the route. That's some next level stuff for a quarterback that just making his second start ever. And Jordan, Jordan, a pretty good example there. We talked to Bill O'Brien about the fact that in their RPO scheme, they don't read an individual on defense. A lot of times we talk about conflict defenders, a linebacker out in space, a defensive end on the end of the line of scrimmage. Bill O'Brien telling us that they read an area in their RPO game, and that gives Bryce Young options as to how he's going to operate, whether or not he gives it, pulls it, or throws it. With that read and reaction is what we were talking about on the field before the game, Jordan. You pointed at Slade Bolton and said that would be my favorite guy because I know where he's supposed to be. He's going to be there. He's like a quarterback in the slot there. He sees things the same way. And to Cole's point, that was an RPO that should have been a slant. So they read that area, but Bryce Young goes, wait a minute. I know I'm reading this area. I know I should read the RPO, but I don't want him running to the safety. Let's run away from him. Quick adjustment. It was on the fourth play of that game offensively for Alabama last week. They run a little gap scheme RPO, and you could see the eyes of Bryce Young out in the flat. They weren't directed at one individual conflict defender, Jordan. That's what made me ask Coach O'Brien about it. He kind of laughed, and he said, you know, when I had Deshaun Watson in Houston, I asked him how they ran it at Clemson. I had never heard that before. Deshaun told me we would read space. We would read an area of the field in our RPO game. Bill O'Brien took that and obviously has kept it with him. Fred Payton has returned a quarterback for Mercer. He started the game, played the first two series. Transfer from Coastal Carolina. Big win for the Shots last night against Kansas. And coverage and incomplete, but a flag. Trying to find Durham and Jordan Battle, the safety from Fort Lauderdale. Never turned around. Pass interference. Defense, number nine. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's the matchup that Carter Peavy wants on the outside. His 6 3 receiver going against a safety. And once Battle gets hip to hip there, he's just got to find the football. You can keep creating content, but you got to turn your head to find the football there. First and 10 line today brought to you by T Mobile. Going to get a lot of those matchups. As Pete Golding and Nick Saban told us in meetings and before the game today that Alabama will live in 3 4 the majority of this game. That's the personnel that they saw Army use against Mercer. Liked the plan, liked the way that that played out. They'll go. Two point stance for Will Anderson. Bottom of the formation for Alabama. And they're trying to run away from him. Durham slips one and gets 
Slice down the second time, a pickup of five to Marco Hellums to stop. We got a flag on the far side. Holding offense number one. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat first down. Devon Harper flagged. By the way, South Carolina, big come from behind walk-off win against East Carolina and Greenville today. Shane Beamer's squad off to a 2-0 start with a GA playing quarterback. Yeah, and Luke Doty was healthy enough. I think he could have gone, but they're riding with Zeb Nolan there. And they went down 14-0 early in that yeah. game. On the road, great way to fight back for a team that still has a lot of growth ahead of them this year. Slow start for Auburn. Tigers blew out Alabama State 62-0. Slow start, 62 nothing. Well, it was it was a slow start. <laughs> so First quarter, not really so strong much. finish. Yes, last three quarters, very very good. Again, getting to the edge, but Parker Roble doesn't have anywhere to go. I can hear some pads thumping from up here. That little Joker wing position they call it for Mercer. Roble getting on the outside, and wham, what was that Henry Toa Toa. This is the game where the value of Henry Toto really shows up. All the movement, all the motions, all the shifts, the recognition is what he is best at, according to Pete Golden. Communicating there after the shift as it try to go option right. It's going to turn into a deep ball. Man coverage, and it is batted away. No flag. Ty James covered by Kool-Aid McKinstry. Good job by McKinstry there. Little contact, but not interfering with the receiver. This is a great play design. Rolling out to the right. Had receivers crossing backfield. And then one post on the backside. McKinstry, though, great job playing the football in the air, right? Not making contact from behind the receiver. Sometimes that's a tough place to be in as a DB. But going up on top and playing the football means you don't get a flag there. Third and 11. Pressure on the edge, little throwback, and it is dropped and incomplete. Andrew May, the tight end, needed just a catch and a block. Oh, I was going to say third down, watch out for Will Anderson, and they send a guy backside here, the running back out to meet him. Oof, standing right, right in the chin. That's not fun. Like, hey, uh, you're going to have to go out and. Will Anderson's going to get about a six-yard, seven-yard run on you, and you're going to have to get in front of him. That doesn't sound like a job I want to sign up for. A little bit easier to do against Mercer, I mean, against Furman or Chattanooga yeah. than Alabama. Yeah. Great carry on this punt feed just to be able to say, yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just going to throw this guy out of the way. Like, I don't know what that feels like. Like, just to just physically be able to just pick someone up that's a big human being and say, you're going to go over there. See ya. Our guy Todd McShay has him as the top five pick in the NFL draft. We got all sorts of movement, flags, a completion that's not a completion to Jamison Williams. That's not going to count, but that was a dime by Bryce Young. Prior to the snap, ball starts. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty, second down. Jevin Cohen, sophomore left guard, moved early. I thought Cohen played a nice game last week in his first start against Miami, but the guy next to him, Evan Neal, you, you mentioned that power. We saw him toss a Miami defensive tackle. The impressive part is maintaining that power at 335. He told me Thursday he played at 365 oh, mm. a season ago. Just part of the impact of David Blue, that new strength staff here at Alabama. They're going to run it again. Cole, that's really interesting to me. So this question may come from a point of ignorance and I will admit that but how as an offensive lineman or as a staff do you find the perfect playing way I think it's where you're comfortable without losing your power obviously Tom you want to try to slim down be in better shape but you have to maintain that power so I don't know if it's a number all the time as it is more of a feel and that's again Matt Ray David Ballou that strength staff is where they've really come into play as to keeping that power maintaining that power but trimming some of these Alabama players down a little bit. 
On third down, Mercer drops eight. Oh, JoJo Earl picks up five, but got met early by Yassine McKee. Dangerous throw here. I actually think Bryce Young was a little confused. Don't think he thought it was cover two. Cover two, that outside corner is sitting hard in the flats. You can see great job protecting JoJo Earl with the throw, but I think initially thought that guy was going to run off with the receiver and he had have free access is over that, there. Is that a strict no-no against cover two? Yeah, yeah, you don't want to throw that football. Again, great adjustment by putting it slightly behind the receiver to protect him, but I think he saw that late. Burnup gets off a boomer. Ooh. No fair catch taken flags afterwards. McKee had to work hard for four yards on that return. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, number eight. Also, an immediate impact goal on what Christian Harris does and doesn't have to worry about. Well, Christian Harris, not necessarily the guy that wants to go out and call the offense, call the formations. So Oto are more comfortable with that. Pete Golding told us it allows Christian Harris to be more of a read and react, sort of see ball, get ball guy, but also go back to the well linebacker position where he is going to cover the tight end more times than not. He's going to be more responsible in coverage. He's a high school corner, so obviously he has better cover skills and they're better utilized where he is now for the Alabama defense. So Oto, part of that legendary De La Salle program in Northern California. And a whistle. We'll stop play before it gets started. I thought that move was Start impactful. False start. Offense number 70. Obviously Emily both ways. Is the goal. Second down. Alabama picks up a free agent linebacker. That was the heart of the exodus for Tennessee. Is this good or bad to have star players moving program to program within a league? Well, look, I think on paper you go, oh, that's not good. You know, you shouldn't be able to free, just go in free agency. But if you're a player, like, these coaches get up and leave whenever they want. They get a new job, they leave, and they told me, I'm going to be with you for four years. So I think in a way, it's it's what needs to happen. Players need to be able to get out of situations for any number of reasons and to a place that they're better fitted. See if Bama brings some pressure. Mercer backed up. They Went unbalanced right and then back left and then another flag and this will be early movement on the Bears and Delay game. Offense. After this is the goal. Remains second down. Carmi delay a game another half the distance. Dangerous. Dangerous territory. <laughs> yeah. As I mean. You... Bama's got to be licking their chops at this point. Mercer hasn't been able to, to, to penetrate between the tackles. And, and you get out on the edge, that's when you could get a negative play. And you don't want to play action pass because then you're standing in your end zone. What do they do here? 31 Anderson coming out of the blocks like a sprinter here in a moment. Trying to find the edge. And they barely do. Wow, Ethan Durham. Stretched the defense and got out of the paint. That's what I meant about getting out on the edge. It can so easily be a negative play, especially Durham is 6'3", 225. He's more of a tight end body at that joker position for Mercer. I mean, just a really good job of breaking a tackle there and not getting a safety. He might be nearly beat the handoff. Out for Will Anderson here at the top of your screen to see if they keep him in coverage or if he comes after the quarterback. Quickly to the outside, incomplete. Trying to find Parker Roble, who transferred in from the Air Force Academy. And Mercer went the wrong direction on that drive. Will Anderson dropping in coverage. Did a good job of redirecting the line of scrimmage. I mean, hey -o. I mean, Parker wow. Roble didn't know where he was, let alone where the ball was coming from because of the redirect there. More of a removal than a redirect. Yeah, yeah. More of a, you thought you were going to run her out? No. No chance. Nine on the line of scrimmage for Bama. Dance party's over. Back to football. Bryce Young. Going in zone. Fancy. Back of the end zone incomplete. 
Wow. Bashan Holden had the wrong side shoes. Otherwise, we got a touchdown and said there's a flag. And we came in quicker than a Montana Fouts fastball. <laughs> I think we just, I think Bryce Young was trying to read his lips there. Pass interference, defense, number 20. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Pretty sure I saw him say, you know, he was covered, but I saw a one by one square that I could fit the ball in, so I did. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is just a heck of a throw to even give Trayshawn Holden the chance there for a touchdown. I able to get his feet in, but that is a, that's a heck of a throw. Right in front of the Kubelik statue here at Brian Denny. On the ground, Jace McClellan bottled up, finds one. Cameron Latu has kind of been their, their go to down here in the red zone when they're passing the football. See him down here. Bottom of your screen attached to the line of scrimmage. Two touchdowns last week against Miami for the former rugby player from Utah, Young Chase. Solomon Zubaru. And he actually again. had Cameron Latu up the middle here. Not sure if Bryce Young didn't see him. Thought the window was tighter than it maybe looked. Look at right now. I think that pressure almost blocked his line of sight. And that, totally. And up from up here, we can see it. It may look great from down there. Lineman could have gotten in the way. It could get messy in there. But from my yeah. spot, Jordan, that pressure came right at Bryce Young's line of sight to his yeah, tight end. Makes it tough. Young steps up, makes a man miss. Takes a hit at the five and dives forward. The pin on the spot, maybe just a couple inches short of a first down. Good coverage there. A back in by Mercer. Nice young went through every read he had. Keeping the offense out there on fourth and short. Robbie Oots comes in as an extra tight end. Boots at fullback now. Leading the way. First down, touchdown. Jace McClellan from five yards out. Three tight end set there. You have blockers for everyone except for that safety coming free. And as an offensive coordinator, you're just saying, that's fine. We're going to beat you to that spot, make you miss or break a tackle, execute it perfectly. Riker banks through another extra point. Well, we saw one from last week a little bit earlier in the broadcast, fellas. Uh, Evan Neal again. Cam Latu, Evan Neal. I'm sorry, sir. You got to go. There's another monster double team on the left side. And Jason McClellan, a guy that Bill O'Brien told us, a true three-down back. They love his short yardage capabilities to go along with being able to help in pass protection and being a help out of, out of the backfield catching the football. Boy, these blocks by Evan Neal are really getting me in the mood for some pancakes tomorrow morning. Get time? Short stack, maybe? I don't know. Feel like your make time. Evan Neal, 6'7, 350 at IMG Academy. That box jump that he did, can you do that? Uh, yeah, if I wanted to tear my groin and my hamstring and everything else. Imaginable. Those trousers would be shredded. Oh, yeah, they don't stand a chance. Um, no, Tom, I probably could not do that. Yeah. Thought and I am uh, much smaller than Evan Neal, in case you didn't know. 
Stands for a return. McKee gets tripped up. Mercer coming to us from the Southern Conference, which is uh, the original conference of many SEC schools. Founding members of SOCON included Alabama, Auburn, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Georgia. And then uh, as the fifth oldest Division I conference, it's given us great collegiate sports history, including the tradition of cutting down the nets at the first ever college basketball conference tournament. Vandy, Jordan, you'd like to know this, shared the first two football championships. Uh, Washington and Lee also won some of those. And eventually, there's a SoCon Alabama history. Eventually, 13 teams would lead the SoCon to form the SEC. Three of those programs are no longer in the SEC. PB going deep. A duck. And we got a flag on pass interference coming on McKintry with the hold. Or pardon me, that's DeMarco Helms. Do you know the three teams that left for the SEC? Pass interference. Defense. Number two. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. 1930 after the 1932 season that are no longer in the SEC. Georgia Tech. Yep. Swanee. Yes. Ooh. I wouldn't have got that. What's the other one? Go south. We played Oklahoma pretty tough last week. Tulane. Oh. Interesting. And we thought this stuff just started the last few last few years ago. Yeah. The conference realignment has been going on since the 1930s. By the way, one of the reasons they left at that time, the SEC schools were just dominating. Look at what Alabama did. Four conference titles, finished first in the SOCON four times in that 10-year span from 22 to 32. In 1932, LSU, Tennessee, and Auburn all finished without a loss, and they said, you know what, let's go do our own thing. Second down. Peavy goes down. A shove up front. They pushed it all back for a loss of six. And Byron Young got there. Wow. We were talking about pancakes earlier from offensive linemen. This is a straight pancake here by Byron Young working on the left tackle. Yeah. No. You want to block me? Nah. I'm good. I'm just going to go after the quarterback. Yeah. Well, it's away. never a good sign as an offensive lineman when you have grass stains on the back of your jersey. Don't want that part of your jersey, dirty. That's for sure. No. Technically, fundamentally, I don't even really know what to tell you on that one. Byron Young gets his hands inside, you're in trouble. Nate Howard, transfer from South Alabama. Pressure from the edge. PB pressured again. And he will crumple again. Fedarian Mathis. Helped out by Will Anderson. Back-to-back -back sacks. Boy, Mathis from the left side of the quarterback. Will Anderson from the right. Anderson worked through a couple different blockers there. Like I mentioned earlier, they're doing everything they can to try to slow down Will Anderson on the out. Jamison Williams, the intended receiver, incomplete. You had a chance Leaps to, to the end zone. The Jones steps. Yeah. that he has, including Jamison Williams. Uh, why is he so high on these guys? I think he was really surprised just how talented Jamison Williams is. And I'm just like, how does a guy like that get lost on a depth chart? And you really just, you don't know. Because he's incredibly fast, great route runner, has good hands. He had a drop earlier, but just a lack in comp, uh, concentration there. He's going to put up some big numbers in this offense. And obviously the young JoJo Earl is a guy that they can use in a number of different ways, similar to the way they've used Waddle. Williams, six starts over two years at Ohio State. Room on the left side now for Trey Sanders. Healthy again after numerous issues kept him off the field. Evan Neal clears away. Oh, look at Javian Cohen there working up to the next level. Spring in the block there. Tell you what, it was a slow start for the run game, but uh, really slow start from a physical standpoint for Alabama overall, and they've really turned it up. Back to the ground game again with three and a half minutes left in the first half. Trey Sanders' return to the football field is nothing short of miraculous after not just a football injury a couple years ago, but a car accident. Not only had him doubting whether or not he'd be playing football again, but when the emergency room nurse called up to Tuscaloosa to say, we have one of your players here, she said, we think he's going to make it. That's how dire his circumstance was after getting T-bone in the Pensacola area. 
shattered pelvis, broken hip, multiple organs impacted by that. So I'm visiting with Nick Saban Thursday. It was really cool to see the head coach at Alabama light up when talking about everything that Trey Sanders had been to. He wanted to try to reemphasize, I don't think everybody has any idea how difficult this entire process was and just so proud. He reemphasized that multiple times, how proud he was he's been able to bounce back and get on the field. Part of a loaded running back depth chart here at Alabama. Sanders slides his way through for a pickup of five. Seems like Sanders brings something a little bit different to the table relative to what Brian Robinson, the starter, brings. Absolutely. He's got a little more juice. He can get on the outside, get on the edges as well. And I love this entire personnel grouping they have out on the field right now. Mechie, JoJo Earl, Jamison Williams, Cameron Latu. This is an athletic, athletic personnel grouping right now. Here's Earl. Latu gave him one block, couldn't get in front of two, and Lance Wise in with the stop. Sanders, by the way, played at IMG Academy. At one point, his position coach, Cole, was a guy by the name of Cadillac Williams. He knew how to tote it a little bit. A little bit. One on one up top there. Jameis Williams, a lot of green grass. Moving Earl that direction. Here's Sanders. Had a touchdown last week against Miami. It goes airborne and then gets planted in the side. One of those hurdles where I'm not so sure you needed it. You're kind of running out of steam, and it's sometimes going to be a little more dangerous than it can be good. I'm probably just jealous that I didn't. You might do be, it, you but know. but I also think the key: if you're going to hurdle, you got to get back down quick. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, you don't want to be Michael Jordan just kind of floating oh. through the air. Well, this can, this room kind of had the standard in front of him the last uh -huh. few years of doing yeah. that from the running back position. Robinson back in. On this third down. And Mercer will timeout. use a timeout. Mercer. Second charge timeout of the half. This Alabama is started this drive with about four minutes to go in the half. They have burned most of that time, and now they're looking to punch one more in before the end of the half. 28 0 Bama. And thanks to our friends at Wheels Up helping make travel easier. Jordan was at SEC Nation this morning in Fayetteville and made his way here into Tuscaloosa today. Additionally, our critically acclaimed series, True South, returns for its fourth season tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. John T. Edge traveling around Scott, Louisiana. There's a Cajun dance hall, explores eateries, learns more about the culture and history of the South. Basically getting to know good people through food right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap, so you can watch anytime. Anywhere. Nation, great show this morning. Cole was part of it playing softball here in Tuscaloosa. But what was the vibe with Texas coming to Fayetteville? Oh, it was electric. I mean, that stadium is going to be packed. Completely sold out. Probably the most they've had in a really, really long time. Tents outside, waiting for seats. They are ready for Texas to come to town and ready to make a statement. Does that one count in the SEC standings? Yeah, I think so. Sure. I mean, ish. A little asterisk, but... Third and six for Bryce Young. Trips to the left. Play clock at two. Looking for Latu. Instead goes to Robinson and a drop. Would have been a first down. You know, Riker wanting to come out to try a field goal. That's what they'll do. It's really fun to watch Bryce Young just work through his progressions, works through three options on the left side, comes back to his fourth option there in Brian Robinson. As you mentioned, on target throw should have been a catch and a first down, but young, talented quarterback that between the ears is just as elite as he is physically gifted. 30 yard attempt for Will Riker. Two to 29 at this point, holding the Bears to just three first downs and 0 for 6 on third down. Man. 
this defense is going to be something real. I mean, I'd still maybe put Georgia's a little ahead, but I Interesting. mean, there's not much difference right. between the two with how physical this Alabama team is up front. Henry Toe told what he's added to the mix and how he's allowed Christian Harris to evolve from the linebacker position. And obviously on the back end, Alabama is extremely talented, better than Georgia on the back end, I believe. So this is going to be one of the better defenses Nick Saban's had here in quite a long time. Talking about the talent at every level for this Alabama defense. Will Anderson brings the talent from the edge. Yeah, one of the more talented guys we've seen on the edge for Alabama in a long time. Rerouting receivers, getting in coverage. He's so athletic. And look at the physicality off the edge. He's not just a speed guy off the edge. has a ton of physicality. He's a ball hawk. Man, 31 is, yeah, get you some oxygen. You deserve it. Tom might need some up here, too. I think I might. That was awfully impressive. 244 pounds, David Ballou told me that he has hit 20 miles per hour on the GPS in what? practice. Look at that right there. Look, can we just let that sink in for a second? Zero to five, he's the fastest on the entire team at 10.7 miles How per hour. And Jalen Waddle last year was only 11.2. He is a, I, a, a few inches, half a foot behind Waddle. That's crazy. One way that it's possible is David Ballou told me that a big portion of the emphasis in their program now is the second strike. Second foot to hit the ground because that's how you generate your power in almost everything that you do. So that emphasis obviously paying off huh. for Will Anderson. I didn't have a good first step or a good second step. That's the end of the first half. Oh, I know I had the wrong emphasis. 31 nothing at the half. Mercer will get the ball to start the second half. That suffocating Alabama defense has held him. 35 total yards. Coming up in just moments, you can watch a live performance of Alabama's Million Dollar Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Here in the second half. The defensive line looked really good early on for Mercer. They were it was movement. making penetration. Yeah, a lot of movement up front, and as I've said a few times now, I think the offensive line struggled last week against Miami at times, struggled early in this game against movement, but they got guys in different situations, different places, so it's all starting to gel. Quarterback struggling, combined two for eight between PV and Peyton, and it's Peyton that starts the second half with a handoff to Fred Davis and a rip of seven. What do you think the locker room was like for Alabama? Boy, I, I don't think Nick Saban was probably too kind with some of his words and some of his frustrations with how Alabama came out, but I think it's still a very confident locker room. It's still a very young locker room, so. Mm, that's popping again. Wow. Just two yards found that time. Henry To'o To'o filling the hole. Jeez, filling the hole is right. Look how quickly Toto hits that hole and avoids the block from Ethan Durham there, who is trying to lay a block for his running back. Watch him just knife through. Bam. Get low, get skinny, and provide a wallop there. We talked to Toto to -O multiple times last year, and he was with Tennessee. Just an enjoyable young man. Bright, talented, and driven. And a great communicator, as Cole pointed out in the first half. Trying to find a hole. There is nothing there. Durham is swallowed up immediately as he tried to cut it upfield. Will Anderson limping off for Alabama. That's not a great sign. That time it was Christian Harris. I don't know what's going on here with my draw. That just went on there automatically. I didn't even press that. Well, we're getting in here. You can see Christian Harris just filled this hole right here that's vacated. Saw Henry Toto -to do it. Bam. It's just great vision, and again, Toto -to taking the communication responsibilities allows Christian Harris to just read and react what he does best. JoJo Earl has taken over the punt return duties, it seems, from Slate Bolden. Back there again. 
trying to find a crease. And we got a flag at the end of that return. 36 yard punch, six in the return. Overall, Bryce Young, 11 of 19 for 91 yards and one touchdown pass. First couple of drives, they had a drop by Williams, a sack of Young at one point, another pressure on a third down, their second third down. What is the value of game reps to a guy like Bryce Young? few different holding calls there you know what what Bryce Young is able to do pre-snap is, is very beyond his age but still you need reps and repetition in an offense for it to be second nature because as a quarterback you can take as many perfect reps in practice as you want right guys are where they're supposed to be I'm in a clean pocket but when stuff starts to break down that's when you need to default to all those accumulated reps that you have that look different, right? And so all these game reps are so much more valuable than the practice reps. They go play action on the first play, and he delivers a bullet complete for a first down at Jamison Williams. This little search route here by Jamison Williams. It's actually a read route. If there's a safety over the top, he's going to sit it up right here. If he was able to get behind a defender, he can take the middle of the field there and just go. Great read, great adjustment, easy completion. Pressure coming. Robinson moves the pile. That's why they call it a search route too, Tom, because it, it, there's not like there's not a yardage, there's not a, a specific landmark that that receiver is going to get to then how do you perfect the timing on a route like that well it, it's space right the timing is something that just you start to feel because Bryce Young's looking for that one high safety or two high safety and the quicker he sees it the quicker he picks up on the body language of his receiver as those hips start to drop receiver comes straight back to the quarterback and that's where that timing lines up on second, they're able to find Mechie, and he's got plenty of running room. It's now a foot race. Mechie checked down by Lance Wise, a gain of 40 on the catch and run. Again, a nice little flip here by Bryce Young. Watch this. Little sidearm. Why does he do that? Because those defensive ends on that side are coming up field. He's got a blitzer coming up field. He's got to get that ball around those guys, and quickly, great change with his arm angle there to get the completion. Robinson. Change of direction behind the line of scrimmage. Ends up an eight-yard gain. He's got the strength to run over guys, and that play started with a juke of the safety Luke Ward. Ward back on the field after an injury kept him out of action last week for Mercer. Second and two. Looks... Finds touchdown, Jamison Williams. Boy, how many times has this Mercer team watched film and seen the RPOs with the slant? RPO slant, RPO slant. Well, then you dial up a whoop, whip route. See ya. That's just tough. I mean, that's an adjustment. It's a great play call. It's a great job by Bill O'Brien for knowing how a team is going to, or what a team's going to expect in the red zone, and then dialing up something opposite. Riker, and he wants to bring it out. Bottled up at the 14. I guess there's no real surprise that uh, Jamison Williams, first player down on that kick cover for Alabama, recorded a 23 miles per hour on that touchdown catch against Miami last weekend. David Blue actually told me he hit 23 miles per hour twice in that game. Second fastest player that he and Dr. Ray have ever recorded on a GPS. Who is the fastest? Will Fuller, 23.4.
complete to the perimeter. Ty James, who originally was a preferred walk-on at Georgia, picks up 11. Will Anderson is not in the game currently for Alabama. Chris Braswell has taken his spot at the jack position. Anderson, Cole looked like he went back to the locker room. He went to the injury tent for about five minutes, and then they walked him back to the locker room. Seemed to be putting some weight on it as he went back. A little split zone, kind of took a low block to the leg. Here's a touch pass in the edge for Parker Roble. This is the play where Anderson got injured, number 31. Right on the right ankle. Didn't look like a foot caught in the grass or anything there, so looked like he was walking okay there. So hopefully it's something minor. Big one next week for Alabama. Go on the uh, road at Florida. They're going to need that speed and physicality on the outside from Drew Sanders, from Will Anderson, because Dan Mullen did just announce Emory Jones is still the starting quarterback, but I tell you what, Anthony Richardson, 267 yards on just seven plays today. He is dynamic and dangerous. If you have to continually announce that, then you that have means to. that backup is doing real things. And he's probably going to be the starter at some point. That would just be my guess. Can only keep that kind of talent off the field for so long. Third and two, complete, and a Mercer first down. Isn't that kind of the move, though? Because you feel like it's probably going to go bad for whoever you play quarterback against this Alabama defense. So let it go bad for your veteran first and then bring the younger guy in instead of playing with his confidence right off the jump. Yeah, I think it's a great point. Look, Dan Mullen is a quarterback guru, has been known that because of the way he develops guys. You know, giving Emory Jones a lot of significant playing time under Kyle Trask to keep him involved, force him to really prepare like he's going to play every single week. Does the same with Anthony Richardson. So it's all going according to plan. And there's Wide a big open. Wow. And Devron Harper will walk it in. 60-yard touchdown pass. Nearly just doubled their entire offensive production. Similar to the play they took a shot on earlier in the game where Kool-Aid McKinstry was in coverage. Yeah, absolutely. Little half roll, and they got a post going back across. And Jordan Battle in coverage there just gets lost. Looked like he was looking for help for Helms who had his own assignment. Yeah, either a blown coverage on the back end, but no post high safety there. Looked like Battle expected there to be one. Top to a single high safety. Doesn't get that. Not sure who was wrong and who was right, but definitely miscommunication there on the back end. Battle and Helms in at that point. Nick Saban is never searching for motivation. And while, of course, Alabama would prefer the shutout, that just provided another teaching point. Another squib kick, second time they've done that. Returned by Cameron Latu. He has had some famous rants before and after FCS level games, whether it's Georgia Southern, the Citadel in 2018, referencing Tin Horns and Rat Poison and it, it never a moment goes by where he allows the program as a whole to rest on its laurels. Whether it be a non-conference game like this or two days after the national championship saying, let's get back to work. Play action for Young. Holden with the catch. How much longer do you think Bryce Young plays? I'd say this drive, I, I, I was kind of looking to the sideline before this, wondering if they were going to make a change to Paul Tyson, Jalen Milrow, obviously two guys that Alabama fans would love to see and understand what they have out of those two guys. So they get some points on this drive. I think that's uh, that might be it for Bryce Young. Earl. 
Earl's got plenty of opportunities in this game. Obviously, they wanted to get him some touches and see what he can do. Evan Neal almost just bulldozed the corner into JoJo Earl. Took the space away from him. Young wants a lot. Wow, great hands by Holden. And then a fancy move at the end. Fancy like date night at Applebee's. A little barbecue sauce or something, something like that. But anyways, little high on the throw there by Bryce Young, but Trayshawn Holden and all six three of them, big body, big frame. Again, this is the this is the fourth read for Bryce Young yeah. in that one. He works all the way front side. It's a full field progression. Comes all the way back. Little inaccurate, but great job working through the progression. Nice slant. JoJo Earl gets outside the numbers, and he's got another Alabama first down. That's at 19 yards. Remember we talked about RPOs and where they're reading. They're reading this area right there. Bad circle on my part, but they're trying to read if there's a linebacker or safety that vacates that area, just replace with the throw, right? Because they're flowing with the run, going to the right, Bam, jo hit him back to the left. JoJo Earl's shoe came off, and he may not have his left shoe on at this moment. Because he's probably going to score, right? Yeah. Runs her out with it. And what a throw and catch behind the defender and in for a touchdown for Alabama. Ajay Hall, we got a flag in the backfield. That looked like a quarterback and a receiver, regardless of the flag, that have been working together for years. Yeah, which is not the case in the area of holding. Ineligible receiver holding. downfield. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's what can happen on these RPOs, these run pass options. It's really a run play here. So you got these linemen that think, hey, I got to get downfield. Evan Neal there getting downfield to pick up a linebacker, not realizing, oh, Bryce Young kept it. Again, a great play, but as a young quarterback, if you do pull it on those RPOs, the ball's got to come out, right? Even if it's incompletion, yeah. Yeah, you can't scramble with it because you got guys three, four, five yards downfield to get a flag on that every time. Pressure coming from the linebackers. Picked up, dumped over the middle, and touchdown, Jace McClellan. Second touch. Can't do much more. McKee taken oh. down immediately. Wow, what a play in special teams, but a key defender missing for Alabama Cole. According to the Alabama medical staff, Tom, it's a lower leg injury for Alabama linebacker Will Anderson. He will be out for the remainder of this game. Alabama fans keep an eye on that one again we saw we saw Will Anderson walk into the locker room look like he wasn't hobbling he was putting weight on the foot but Florida on the horizon next week two mobile quarterbacks strong run game Will Anderson's gonna be important Florida beat USF in Tampa today 42 to 20 you guys saw both Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson up close which one of those two quarterbacks has the better chance to beat Alabama? <laughs> I mean, Emory Jones has a better chance to put them in situations to be successful. He knows the offense better. He's more consistent at that. But look at the type of quarterbacks that have upset Alabama. Who have they been? The Johnny Manziels, the guys that can do things off script. It's very difficult yeah. to beat Alabama on script, right? They're fundamentally sound. They have better athletes usually. So you need a quarterback that can make plays that other guys can't. And to me right now, that's that's Anthony Richardson. Tom, I left that Florida game thinking to myself, I think the Gators could win a lot of games this year with Emory Jones at quarterback. I do not believe the Gators could beat Alabama or Georgia with Emory Jones at quarterback. I don't think that automatically means they can or will beat Alabama with Anthony Richardson yeah, at quarterback. Right. But because of his ceiling, because of his ability to potentially go off and create explosive plays, I do think that's their best chance to beat Alabama. Third and short for Fred Payton and Mercer. And they're going to run a quarterback sneak. Because there are limitations to, to Anthony Richardson in the pass game. you got to change things a little bit. Not going to be as complex. 
not going to have the type of full field progressions to stress the defense sideline to sideline. But what he maybe lacks in that or is still developing in that, he's able to make up for with just the eye-popping, unbelievable plays that make you go, wow. I think what's interesting about that conversation is in Dan Mullen reference, the two-headed monster that they had with Chris Leak and Tim Tebow. But those discussions... Oh, intercepted on an underthrown ball. And Alabama's got another big defensive play with a takeaway from Marcus Banks. Tell me the last time, Tom, you saw a quarterback in college take a three-step drop from under center and throw the football. It's been I, don't, I don't know, five, ten years maybe, but throw was inside, and Marcus Banks does a great job there of pushing the receiver to the sideline and then finding the football. Remember the, the penalty by Jordan Battle yeah, earlier? never turned around. He walled the defender, or the, the receiver, but he never turned for the football. Great job on the outside there by Banks, the junior out of Houston. Quarterback change for Alabama up 45 to 7. This will be Paul Tyson. One pass attempt against Miami last week. And he'll put it in the air in the first play this week. Deep post. And caught by JoJo Earl. 38-yard strike, first attempt. Hello, Paul Tyson. Wow, and that play right there looked a little bit more like Mac Jones, right? They get into the pistol, play fake, deep post over the top. The ball was not very well thrown, honestly. Had some wobble to it, hung up a little bit. JoJo Earl, though, made a great play on that football. Here's Trey Sanders. Lost the football. And it turned into a mosh, but it looked like Sanders was able to get it back. Just holding that ball a little loose. His running backs are taught to punch the chin. Remember Tiki Barber back in the day, how he used to run with the football? Yeah. Football was up and down, right? The point was north and south. Makes it much harder for defenders to get in there, punch, rip it out. Ball just a little loose by Sanders there. Saban's telling him that. Yeah. Tell him that on the sideline. He's replaced by McClellan now. Ooh. One hopper. Hey, no, bounce passes are great in basketball. Oh. It's on Nate Oates on the big screen. Yeah, yeah he could use that. It'll set up third and goal now. We used to have a play in high school where we do that, but we throw it backwards, right? Did you play on fake grass? No, it was real grass, so, and there was divots and stuff, so you never knew which way that thing was going to bounce. That's probably why we never called it in a game. We used to run into practice all the time. A little bounce pass, everyone's like, oh, it's incomplete. They quit on it. And then throw it deep. Tyson going in zone, overthrew, and incomplete. Another play looked a little bit different there, guys, and spoke to Bill O'Brien on Thursday. We talked about Paul Tyson potentially coming into this football game, and he said, I have three different playbooks. It's not a situation where Paul Tyson will come in and will continue to call the same plays. It changes. It's a different playbook when he gets into the game, and then there'll be a different playbook when Jalen Milrow gets into the game as well. He'll call it different for all three. Well, you noticed immediately, right? I mean, Bryce Young hasn't been in a pistol formation today. Why? Because when the back's offset, they can do a lot more of the RPOs. That, that's not going to be Paul Tyson's wheelhouse. Field goal is no good. Riker was rolling and riding an FBS best made field goal streak and had reached 19 consecutive. See if the snap and hold were good here. Snap clean, hold good. Just pulled it a little bit. So Reichard with a rare miss. First in his last 20 field goal attempts. And Mercer will take the ball on the 20.
Here's Brandon Marshall. Redshirt freshman from Reigns High School in Jacksonville. Preseason all SoCon selection. Second string defensive front in there. Byron Young, Tim Smith. Getting some time in there. That, that first unit, about as disruptive, and I know it's Mercer, but about as disruptive as I've seen from that group in a long time. I think it's interesting when you come into a game like this as Alabama being a heavy favorite. And Alabama, of course, known for its depth, but you have to continue to develop that depth, right? I mean, Drew Sanders takes over for Christopher Allen. Now you need to develop the depth behind him. If Will Anderson is in a place where he needs to miss time, Chris Braswell steps up. You have to develop the depth behind him in opportunity and game situations for these guys. And that's what makes Alabama... One of the best, if not the best, every single year. Their depth is better than every single school in the entire country because of how they recruit and then also how they develop. Third and two. Mercer just two and nine on third down, and that one's intercepted by Malachi Moore. We got a flag flying late. Malachi Moore who was sensational for Alabama last year before being injured late. And Cole, the coaching staff, just raved about him as a first-year player. Defense, number 42. The 10-yard penalty is enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Jalen Moody's hold will wipe away the interception. What makes Malachi Moore so good? Well, what was special about him last year, as Pete Golding told us, is his ability to learn the audibly and visually he just said i don't have a lot of guys like that most football players have to learn in a kinesthetic way they have to be out and doing it i can speak to that when i went to offense when i got to college i had never played it then i moved down to center i could draw every defense there was on the whiteboard you could ask me odd oaky bear even all of them i could go draw them i go address the football get down in the stance and pad i didn't know what in the world i was looking at half the time but malachi was able to take that translated to the field and then the instincts are something that Nick Saban talks about with Malachi that just put him off the charts there's Davis over the left side yeah, you got down in a stance earlier today as well and didn't know what was going on you had a catcher's mitt in your hand did you see it actually yeah, you guys all making fun of that and everybody's having a good laugh and talking about it no one's gotten down there and done it and I didn't practice it, and I didn't have warm-up pitches. I just got in catcher's gear, got down in the stance, and said, all right, Montana, let it rip. And guess what? I didn't even see it the first couple <laughs> tries. Cole tapped me on my shoulder after a production meeting last night. He said, hey, you want to go to the sporting goods store? That's a nice leaping grab made by Ethan Durham. Here we go. Had to buy some protection oh, last night. In case you got a one-hop, huh? <laughs> yeah. Into coverage, that one's batted around and falls incomplete. Danielle Wright nearly picked it off. Tell you what, it seems that they are much more confident pushing the ball downfield with quarterback Fred Payton. That's a great job there by Ethan Deerham to turn into a, a, a defender. Mm -hmm. A break, pass breakup. I don't think you can give a, pass, a receiver a PBU, but... <laughs> It's a bad sign. I'm, I'm giving him one. Hey, how was your game last week? I had three PBUs. Don't you play <laughs> offense? Yep. Sweet. <laughs> Here's Fred Davis. Gain of seven. Third and three. Mercer's only run for 64 yards in this game. Need 67 to keep the drive alive. And they come up short. Davis nearly a yard short. Stopped by Christian Harris. And pretty good push here on the right side behind Jason Poe and a couple others, but got to go for it here, right? Of course. They'll flip John Thomas over to the left side. Go left side heavy. He's normally the right tackle. Quarterback sneak, and they get it. 
It was really fun talking to Drew Chronic about this offense. The old Delaware wing T, and he went back to, we talked about his playing days in high school and what his dad did, and he said, but you've also got to be able to sprinkle in just enough of the passing game, and he referenced Mitch Sultan that uh, played for his dad and was a leading passer in the state back in 1983 before coming here to play at Alabama. It's a difficult little scheme to prep for. No one likes it. Remember being on teams, our defense hated going against a wing tee, and then you sprinkle in some spread formations like this with mobile quarterbacks and Ooh. throwback. Nice looking draw. Ooh. And Andrew May picks up eight. A great design here. Sprint left, throwback right, running back and a tackle, but watch 51, Jason Poe. Get off the block there and deliver one right here. Bam! Oof. Reach Chris Braswell. Woo! He's pretty stoked about that one. You saw the minimal yardage difference in the second half between the two as Bolden takes it out near the 40. This was Nick Saban's reaction after that last play. Happy would not be the correct assessment no. of that right there. Only if it were opposite then. Yeah, so Daniel Wright just thinking he had post high there. And once that safety rolls out of the hole, the call should have been for him to get that half of the field in cover two. And that's exactly what Kool-Aid McKinstry was anticipating as well. So looks like he got burned, but more of a miscommunication. Hey, uh, Alabama's going to its third quarterback of the day, Jalen Milrow. What can we expect? Boy, I tell you what, at practice the other day, he looks like an NFL free safety. He'll hand it off on first down and Trey Sanders. He is a, a specimen. I mean, he is tall, broad shoulders. It looks like he's never missed a day of curls in his life. And he might be the fastest guy on this entire team. It was pretty special to watch him get outside the pocket a couple times on Thursday at practice just to see his athleticism. Got a really good arm, but he's developing his understanding of passing concepts so he can operate this offense. This is where he lives. By the way, that's not Jordan just saying that. Nick Saban told us he might be the fastest player on this football team. Yeah. And he is tweaked up. I mean, you see how quick he can get the ball out, the velocity he can put on the football, but then obviously right there when he gets to full speed. And Nick Saban told me he's a guy that needs to develop. He needs reps. Going back to the spring, he said he went to Bill O'Brien and told him, no more quarterback runs with this young man. He needs time to develop as a quarterback. He needs to work on progressions. He needs to work on his reads. He needs to see things through the eyes of a quarterback, not just an athlete that's going to take off and run. And getting those game reps here in the fourth quarter, and a big lick laid down by Roy Dell Williams. You know, what was interesting about watching that development in practice is every other play or so, more frequently, Bill O'Brien was walking up right before the play and pointing things out to Jalen Milrow. Right? You might say that's hand-holding, you're telling him what to do, but, but you want to make sure he's getting the most out of each reps and his eyes are going in the right place. He looks in the wrong place, it's a wasted rep. He only gets a few each practice, so Bill O'Brien very intentional and hands-on, especially in the pass game at practice on Thursday with Jalen Milrow. On fourth and one, Milrow's going to run for a first down and plenty more. Here's that third playbook that Bill O'Brien had. Yeah, and this is what you do with number two in there. These are designed quarterback runs. You have a running back in Roydell Williams as a lead blocker, and you just get the speed and athleticism on the edge and see what happens. Yeah, one of the coolest things about him, he mentioned to Jordan when he was back behind the players, he was about 15, 20 yards behind the offense, and I was just watching him back behind. It wasn't his turn to run it. And he would put his arms out and kind of fake the ball into the belly of the mesh. Or he would point out where his progressions were going to be. And he would kind of mimic throwing the football. He would he would work his feet as if he was delivering the ball, delivering a pass, or going through his progressions. And I asked Coach O'Brien about it. I said, did you assign him that? Is it something you want to do? And he said, we talked about it. But I have to give him the credit. I'm not going to take the credit for that. It's something that Jalen wants to do. He wants to be back there and see it, to understand it, to recognize it. He knows it's going to help him grow as a quarterback. But that's on him. He deserves the credit for doing that at practice. And that's a way just to steal reps and learn visually. Yeah. 
cool Colton. part about that is Bill O'Brien told us after that, he said, there's only one other player I've ever seen do that, ever, in all my coaching, Penn State, Patriots, wherever. And he said, it was when I was in New England, and you kind of expect him to go an offensive guy. He said, Junior Say, I was the only other player I ever saw do that. He would go stand behind the defense and practice. He would point things out. He would kind of make calls under his breath. He would adjust everything to himself. He said, it's the only other time I've seen a player do it. I think that goes back to what Cole was mentioning earlier about learning, right? That's a kinesthetic way of learning. You can't just sit back without the view of a quarterback or listen to a play and and soak it all in. Some of us, me included, need to move. He is moving. Yeah. Jalen Milrow, and, and what a dynamic that brings, not just to the run game, but then the next step, the RPO game. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's where he'll live in this offense if he ever gets extended reps or barring something catastrophic, is quarterback design runs option plays and RPOs and he can excel at that and I got to tell you if anything were to happen to Bryce Young and you needed a quarterback for more than a few quarters I think Milrose the guy you could build a really dangerous offense around the quickest he wants to throw this time a little pump fake and they got him by a fist the fabric no gain It's kind of cool, too. You think about the fact that some people would say, well, it can't be done. You go back to Blake Sims and position changes for him and how he turned himself into a quarterback and was yeah. able to be successful. And it's, I mean, it's the outlier now for Alabama, right? We see what Cam Latu is doing at tight end. He moved over from outside linebacker. We saw Mac Jones last year. He had stuck around and been a backup for a little while. Usually it's high-profile recruit. Have to go be a professional for a couple of years. Well, it takes me back to the conversation we started before the interception on Tebow and Leak. And, and Mullen has talked to us about this before. He said, what made Timmy so successful early on is that I only I only used him in spots where he could be most successful. And he only ran three or four plays. Yep. So Chris Leak even was out there for the majority of the time. And you put that backup guy in in a position to be successful and efficient. Positions to gain confidence. A handful of plays that he feels really comfortable with, that he's not going to mess up and you give him opportunities to develop his confidence and develop his on-field. Here we go. Next one miss. And once again, they get him by the jersey. It's a loss of one. And a nice hustling play made by Mercer. Trying to hit a shot down the middle of the field. He's able to get outside the pocket. Look at the sidestep. I mean, again, didn't really gain anything on that play, but you see the athleticism. That number's coming off the back of his jersey as well. One of them, old Earl Campbell tearaways. Real Reichard will try to start another streak. Missed for the first time in 19 attempts from 34. Attacks. Either they were they were newborns or, or not born yet, and there were several. Was a great feature this morning that talked about the impact they have and an opportunity to talk about selflessness and leadership and giving uh, of oneself. You were you were in school back then. Seventh grader. Yeah, playing basketball out before school started and remember hearing it. I was right next to the bike racks. I remember exactly where I was and then obviously went to a few periods of class, watched it, and then went home. Kind of that first moment I felt like that safe bubble I was in yeah. was, not, was, was not real. You know, you, you feel scared for the first time in your life and then you feel like you connect and you have support from strangers and unity that you never experienced as well. We look back on the return to college football that week 20 years ago. It was an SEC game in Starkville that brought many back. Mississippi State was at home on September 20th. An emotional return to sports. And then at Kyle Field that Saturday after the Thursday return. There's a, a baseball game, by the way, tonight in New York. The Mets and the Yankees will play. And, of course, Mike Piazza hit the famous home run when sports returned to New York City. That crossing route complete for a first down. They hosted the Braves, and I talked to Chipper Jones about that moment many times. He was playing left field at that time in his career. And when he took left field in the first inning, he found the shell casings from the 21-gun salute that they did before the game. And he said, I scooped up the casings. I put them in my back pocket. And of all my baseball mementos, that is the most cherished.
Mercer's offense humming here in the second half. Fred Davis with a nice carry. Drew Chronic now has some, some stuff to build on with what Mercer's been able to accomplish here in the second half. Alabama's got some stuff to fix on tape because that big chunk play through the air, the exact same play Mercer scored the touchdown on, the exact same play they almost had an opportunity on downfield early in the game. What leads to the miscommunication in the secondary? Well, Alabama's defense is all about that man match, right? Where sometimes it's zone, depending on releases, sometimes it's man, and what really messes with that concept is deep crossing routes. And that's what that play is. Get the quarterback moving one way, get a safety to move, and then you cross guys, and responsibilities change. There should be a defender waiting for that crosser, and if they're not, you have a lot of green grass on the other side. Mercer has outgained Alabama here in the second half. You know, guys, Dan Mullen told us last week as he was preparing for this season, and Emory Jones being his quarterback, there are certain portions of the playbook. You have an entire playbook, but only portions come out for each individual season. I got a feeling he's going to be finding the throwback version of that playbook. <laughs> Everything that's in it, he's going to bring it out next week. Well, the key is then to have time to let those routes develop. Yes, and that's the problem, and that's why that kind of getting a half roll outside, moving the pocket, changing the landing point really helps out with that on that play. Ball on the ground, Mercer able to fall on it. Fred Payton trying to set up play action. Is there anything more dangerous to the rest of the SEC than some of the things that have happened, especially here in this second half, the second half of Miami? I mean, that's... If I was another SEC team, I'd be like, man, couldn't you just, couldn't everything go right for you? Yeah. So, so Nick Saban doesn't get fired up and, you know, I mean, that's. And everybody in the building doesn't walk on eggshells uh -huh. and, and need to be perfect. Because, unfortunately, those plays mean growth and growth is scary. Whoa, bad snap, sails over Peyton's head. And that will look better in the box score. Brandon Marshall has to cover it on the logo. The loss of 24. I'm going to propose something. Yep. As a quarterback and as an offensive guy, I realize how biased this will sound. There should be a rule like in baseball where it's, there's an error. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's just, that should be an error. You should so you're take saying that, that against shouldn't... the total of offense, right? Okay. Well, Maybe that, that's a dumb idea. That would have been E center. Riley at yeah, exactly. charge for the error. Give the error to the center. Because that shouldn't happen. You know? Dumb idea, good idea, never going to happen. 48-14, oh, there's no such thing as dumb ideas. Only <laughs> dumb discussions about those ideas that may follow. Fred Payton scrambles for three. Kind of like how you know, sacks shouldn't count towards the rushing total. Especially for a quarterback, right? I mean, yes, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with that should change in the college game. Right. Or, you know what a dumb idea is? Love it. I'll give Let's you go. a dumb idea. A washed up offensive lineman thinking he can catch the best completions in seven touchdowns for Young on the season. Jalen Milrow with the carry. I feel like after today, there will be a little package on the play sheet of Bill O'Brien. That is for Jalen Milrow in an actual competitive game. Now, I don't know if they're going to use it, but you could see a scenario, a world where bringing him in for a drive is like. If, if Bryce Young has enough reps where you're comfortable that his timing isn't going to be disrupted by coming out of a game. Right, and I, don't, I think we're getting to that point. I think Bryce, just in talking to him after practice on Thursday, he's, he's incredibly grounded. He's incredibly intelligent. I just I feel like he's the personality type that could handle that. He, he would be fine with that. Yeah. Could be interesting. Well, another thing that's interesting, if you're an Alabama fan, is you have a real reason to watch quarterback play, not just on Saturdays this year, but also Sundays. Yeah. Three starters, including two going head-to-head -to -head tomorrow. It's the first time since 1982 that Alabama has had three quarterbacks start. Crazy. The same weekend in the NFL.
crazy about that is the last three, too. It's not like a guy that's been playing the league for 10 years right. and, oh, another rookie. Pardon me, it was 83, Stabler, Todd, and Rutledge all started tomorrow. So, uh, and Matt. All right, so we know what they can do. We know what we've seen. Mac Jones obviously won the job for both Cole and Jordan. You got to pick one, not just for tomorrow. Pick Mac. one for the career. Mac. I'm taking Mac. Cole? Mac Jones. Wow. Can I get a quick why? That system, his intelligence, it's Brady 2.0. Accuracy, toughness. Pretty good qualities to have. That'll be fun to watch. Jalen.